What is going on guys, DBG here and today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 small forwards in NBA 2K20 for my team. These guys are all going to be, well they're not all going to be primary small forwards, but they can all play at a small forward position and we're really going to be looking mostly at like how they play at that position. None of these guys are going to be on the power forward and center tier list because I don't know, I feel small ball in 2K just hasn't really been a thing for the last while, especially in like the post-patch era of 2K. The triangle button's back. And once the triangle button comes back as like the main offense for people, it be really does become a case of you have to more so be big than anything else. And defense matters a lot. So number 10, we've actually just got a big small forward here. We got Joe Smith. I was very torn on going with Smith or going with Odom. I'm with Smith in the end. I like Odom, though. I really do like Odom. But Smith's release is really nice. Dribbling's pretty good, and he's that little bit bigger as far as player bill-wise goes than Lamar Odom. But for 56k, that's not a crazy amount of MT right now. That's about four hours of playing, of, like, grinding out the game. It's not that expensive to get a Joe Smith. Still not cheap, but if you are going to go and pick him up, if you have built up the MT, 54k for a card at his level is not the worst thing in the world. Again, he's a guy that in other years would have been 10,000 MT at this stage, and with him being 10k, he'd be a lot more achieve attainable. Still, though, not bad. Number 10. Number 9, we got Robert Covington. Maybe the best value player in the game. Super good on defense. Tendos, 55 humball steal. At this stage in the game, like that's higher than Jordan's. They've nerfed everyone's Tendos, so that's really good. He still gets great defensive animations. His shot is super smooth. Defensively, the badges don't look ain't spectacular, but trust me, they're good. He is a top-tier lock. The uh, the um like player build he has is really good. I know he's only 6'7", and Ty putting him in the top 10 players in the game a couple of weeks ago was absolutely bonkers. But I will say that he is definitely a top 10 small forward. And I got him at number 9. Number 8, we got Marion. Marion obviously is better at everything than Rocco. I think you can make the argument Rocco is better than him, I will say. But Marion's got all the defensive badges. He can dunk really well. He's got Marion release on quick. The problem is, is the guy cannot in any way dribble the ball. He also can't... Like, you know what? You can get used to this jumper. I've never minded Sean Marion's jumper. I've always found... There'd be way worse uppers than Sean Marion's. And it's nice and quick. He'll hit from the corners. I don't mind Sean Marion. I really don't. I think he is a good player. I think he's really nice. Is he worth collecting all those cards for? Probably not. But I still do think if you have him, he is just about a top 10 small forward at this stage of the game. At number 7, we're going to go with Ron Artest. Maybe the best lock in the game. He's got a 35 almost steal 10, which isn't great, but he's got a 90 steal. He's got gold glove. He's also got like 91 lateral, a really good three ball. Like Rudy Gay, Rudy Gay is a super good release. He's got Trey Young dribble style, which is pretty decent. He can actually shoot some fades. Like overall, a really good card. For 52 and a half K, I still think he's very expensive. I know he was 70 when he first came out, but I still think 52 and a half K is quite expensive for him on the 23rd of October. This was like your day one goat, but I do still think he's hanging around in the top 10. At number six, we're going to go with the new Glenn Robinson. That release is super good. Dean Way, Clay Thompson. Like last year, I don't know what he had last year, but I do know he had Haywood Highsmith, Haywood Highsmith. Um, the equivalent of that. Like in 2K22, I think it was called like base 29. He had... Like, it was, he was a 95, wasn't he? Yeah, because he was free in season one. Yeah, it was base 29, upper 78, which became Haywood Highsmith, Haywood Highsmith in 2K23. I just want to see, did he have that release in that game? Because he definitely didn't have a release anywhere near as good this year. No, he had Haywood Highsmith, Haywood Highsmith last year. Yeah, that release was not great. Not awful. It's a Danny Granger release, I think, but... Not Dean Wade Clay. Good dribble style. Good on defense. And honestly, the fact he's not in the top five. I might be wrong with this, you know. I might be really wrong having him outside my top five. But he's just outside it. 
Because number five, we're going to go with Carmelo. Carmelo doesn't quite have the defense. Release is still really good. Um, Booker dribble style is nice. He can shoot the fades. Offensively, he's still pretty nice. Shooting-wise, he's every single badge. Defensively, again, not too great. Carmelo Anthony is six foot seven. Since when has Carmelo Anthony been six foot seven? Have we ever seen a Carmelo Anthony be six foot seven before? Am I missing something? No, he was six seven on one of his cards last year. One one single version of his card was six foot seven last year. All of his like all time and everything, even his cards from like the start of the year. So we got a card in November, it was 6-7, even though his card in September was 6-8. Alright, it is what it is with Carmelo Anthony. I don't know why they made him 6-7, but still, I think he, I can see why people would say he's better. I can also see why people would say he's worse than Glenn Robinson. But, yeah, the height is... Does anyone talk about the height? Nah, surprisingly, people aren't really talking about the height. Either way, though, I think Glenn might even be better. He is quick, though. Number four, we're going to go with Tatum. I actually think that Jason Tatum might be one of the more underrated players. Is he worth getting? Hell no. Like if you want to look at the uh, 2K Day collections, where's 2K Day Jason Tatum? The rest of this set, like, the total cost is way too high because you're still looking at over 100K for Al Horford. You're looking at, like, 50K for him, 50K for him. Like, that's 200K. You're probably looking at close to like 300k for Jason Tatum but he's still good still got that defense he still got that jump shot he can shoot from deep he is one of the best small forwards in the game and the only reason he's at number four is because at number three I've got Scotty Pippen Scotty Pippen with that super nice release good dribble style fantastic defense 86 steal got the length got challenger got hall of fame clamps and for 116k like he's not the worst card in the world he really is not the worst card in the world I'm telling you that for certain. He is not that bad. 6'8", 7 foot wingspan. He's got so much going for him, lads. I'm telling you, he is. He's up there. He is up there with the best cards in the game. And he's not number he's not number one purely because at number two I got Kevin Durant. KD, 90 speed. The only thing with KD is you have to play a certain play style to be effective. You got a hash. You got a pro play with KD. Like there are some guys that like pro play doesn't really matter with, but there's other guys you gotta like really use the pro play. Otherwise, they're kind of worthless. And I'll say Dirk is a pro play type of guy, or like you gotta use Dirk like he's Dirk to be effective, and you gotta use KD's pro play animations because the general stuff that he has if you try to use KD like he's just another guy he's going to suck. So, I understand the people that think KD is the goat. I understand the people that think KD sucks. For me, I think he's number 2 small forward in the game, a decent defender, a fantastic shooter, even though the release is a little bit slow. Pre-patch was unguardable, post-patch he's kind of hard to guard, but he's still basically unguardable. But number 1, I just think Kawhi Leonard is unbelievable. Like this is like the Roko on steroids. His release is one of the easiest through time this year. He's not going to be much of an offensive player, but he is the best defender I've used this year. He's a clamps challenger glove. He's just a way better version of a Scotty Pippen. He's just a significantly better Scotty. His cost isn't cheap, though. The only thing is, though, if you dig a deal at a Marcus Hall, you had Marcus Hall at 60k. And if you had Marcus Hall at 60k, you're looking at like 150-ish K, 160-ish K for Kawhi, which is super good. But for me, he is he's better than KD. He's better than KD. Like if I'm running my best team, Kawhi's going in there. Scotty, you're gone. I, I just didn't even bother getting KD, but Kawhi, Kawhi is in there as the small forward on my best team. 